So seven years ago, I made this piece of junk. It's an ugly thing, but it gets the job done. It's the first AI program I ever wrote. It solves Sudoku using this naive backtracking algorithm and this smart backtracking algorithm with MRV heuristics. But I'm seven years more experienced now, and there's an algorithm I always wanted to build, and it's supposedly the absolute best algorithm at solving Sudoku. And surely a dev with 10 years experience can implement it, right? I mean, surely, how hard can it be? I'm gonna make this into a full-fledged Pi game as well, because I want real graphics, uh, not the terminal-based stuff. Oh yeah, and I only have 12 hours to do it. Yeah, it took me about 20 seconds to get that to focus. But, uh, let's get started. First, I make a new project, and install Pi game to make this a proper video game, if you will. I'm a game dev now, what can I say? Spending too much time with Poly Mars and Code Bullet, I guess. Although he doesn't make games, according to him. And Thor from Pyre Software. Great people, by the way. I'll create a new file, initialize Pi game, add my constants that make up the board, display that information, and for now, I'm just gonna have a single board display to test things out. We can add more later, or randomize it, maybe. Now all I need to do is draw the grid, draw the board, and voila- oh, You gotta be kidding me. WSL on Windows strikes again. Arrest WSL. Yes, please. I actually like WSL, but the graphics... But I've gotten it to work before. This shouldn't be that big of a problem. All I gotta do is download and install the X server for Windows machine. So open bash RC, export display, grep, name server, resolve.conf, see if that'll make it work, and it doesn't so uh, well maybe i could just upgrade pi game in its entirety upgrade everything i got install all of these developer libraries and export the video and audio drivers and run them manually specifying those drivers and it still doesn't work what the forget it let me just whip up a quick v project with the react and javascript and forget python even exists which is a stupid way to do it the dancing links algorithm in javascript but I never said I was smart, but at least now I know how to make a Sudoku board. So I'll build out the logic for drawing the board, which will draw a grid and draw numbers. So I'll draw the grid. <laughs> I mean, that's how you do it, right? That's how you draw the grid? No? Oh, okay, okay, I'll, I'll throw it all in a for loop. Mm, that may be a little better. Then I'll draw the numbers in the proper cell via the row and column like this. And of course, make it look pretty, well, kind of pretty. I'm just gonna create an example board in app.jsx and there we go. <sighs> but I really wanted to do this in Python. Wait a second. I don't think I ever reloaded the bash RC file. If I do that, and go back in my virtual environment and run the code, well, there are some errors, but wait, it works! Ugh, that is very ugly. I mean, it's average. It's not bad. Not ugly. But it could be bad. Let's do that by just, eh, I don't know, changing all the blacks to greens and whites to blacks. Hacker man. Crap. All right, well, not bad, actually. You can't use it, but we're not solving Sudoku. The algorithm is solving Sudoku. We don't need to use it. And at least it didn't take that much time. Are you kidding? Uh-oh. Okay, let's implement the new algorithm. The actual thing we're supposed to be doing. You ever heard of this guy, Donald Knuth? The art of computer program- the, the- the father of the analysis of algorithms? Alright, anyway, um, he made Algorithm X and Dancing Links. It's a recursive, non-deterministic, depth-first backtracking algorithm to solve the exact cover problem. And a note where the example of the exact cover problem, Sudoku. Wait, y'all do know what Sudoku is, right? It's a logic-based game where your objective is to fill a 9x9 grid with digits so that each column, each row, and each of the 9 3x3 subgrids have all the digits from 1 to 9. Oh, you didn't know that. Okay, good. But we're going to build Algorithm X, the Dancing Links Algorithm, whatever you want to call it. I guess technically it's Dancing Links is a fast implementation of Algorithm X or something like that. I don't know. I'm just here to implement it, not to really understand anything. But to solve Sudoku with Dancing Links, we must represent it as an exact cover problem. The research paper says, The dance steps. One good way to implement Algorithm X is to represent each one in the matrix A as a data object X with five fields, left, right, up, down in columns, so that's what we'll do. Now, if we were still in JavaScript, we'd write it like this, but thanks to Python's built-in data structures, and keep a note that each column list also includes a special data object called its list header, we can use a list to create the constraints that transform the Sudoku problem into an exact cover problem. The list X includes all possible constraints, each row column pair, row number pair, column number pair, and box number pair, and these constraints ensure that each number appears exactly once per row, once 
per column and once per box. The list headers are part of a larger object called a column object. Each column object Y contains the fields we just created, so I'll create a dictionary that maps each of those possible placements to create a precise exact cover matrix. Now I have to convert the constraints into a zero to one matrix, which is what it says in the paper. And I'm going to do that with this exact cover function which builds our necessary data structures by converting the list X into a dictionary and populate it using the constraints in Y where each key in X points to a set of rows that satisfy the constraint. In creating these sets for constraints, it directly mirrors Canoe's concept of maintaining doubly linked lists for rows and columns, just in our own unique way. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, that's okay, neither do I. But most of it's right here in the research paper anyway. It's, uh, there's a lot of pseudocode here. I mean, you can see all this pseudocode here, which is basically just a reiteration of this pseudocode up here. Not bad. I mean, the code looks like it's kind of making sense so far, so let's just leave it alone. Then the research paper really goes into depth about, uh, uh you wonder why my monitor looks like that? I just had it in e-paper mode to make reading things easier on the eyes. We can turn it back to coding mode if you want. Or maybe since we aren't coding, we'll go in mbook mode. That's just one of the many features of the BenQ 28 inch and 24 inch programming monitors. With the 24 inch monitor, I'll be giving away to one of y'all. Yes, monitors built specifically for programmers. Because we're looking at code all day, and when that text clarity is poor, it strains your eyes. When the blue light and the brightness and the contrast stay the same while the lights in your surroundings change, change even more strain. That's why BenQ has built-in features to keep your eyes healthy. If you're on a dark theme like me, you set it to coding dark theme. Or if you're on a light theme like some sort of heathen, which I actually do, but only in the best code editor of all time, Notepad++, you set it to coding light theme. What this does is adjust brightness, sharpness, contrast, all to adapt to your coding conditions. As does application mode, night hours protection, brightness intelligence gen 2. This monitor does everything to ensure your eyes stay healthy while you focus on your work. You don't don't even have to think about it. They also have higher pixel density for crystal clear text, improved code differentiation, a 16 by 10 aspect ratio on the 24 inch, and a 3 by 2 aspect ratio on the 28 inch. Offer more vertical space to see more lines of code at once so you can tell your senior dev who told you functions should be no longer than what can fit on the screen, hey, it fits on my machine. As for the giveaway, this BenQ 24 inch programming monitor, all you have to do is sign up to my free software developer newsletter DevNotes at devnotesdaily.com, as well as leave a comment on this video telling me how many monitors you're currently running, what operating system you're currently running, and your favorite feature of the BenQ programming monitors. Now, our initial grid already has some preset values, but Knut tells us to remove X from the list. Every programmer knows this. So I'll iterate through the initial grid and cover the constraints of the given numbers. Everything up here is all initial setup. Now we solve Sudoku by applying algorithm X, which recursively searches for a solution that satisfies all of our constraints. Our specific implementation being dancing links. So the paper explains covering and uncovering columns right here. We implement this with a cover function that removes rows and columns associated with a given placement, effectively covering them. Don't make fun of my nested for loops now, all right? It gets the job done. Our uncover function restores these rows and columns, uncovering them. And these operations correspond to the left, right, up, down, and column operations we discussed earlier. I love it when a plan comes together. Now, the core of algorithm X, the non-deterministic algorithm to find all exact covers, a recursive search that finds all possible solutions by using those functions to cover and uncover columns. It chooses the column with the fewest options, covers it and recursively attempts to solve the reduced problem. If unsuccessful, it backtracks by uncovering the column. But I have no idea if this works. Uh, <laughs> probably doesn't. Nothing ever does on the first try. But there's one way to find out. And you kind of got to massage the algorithm and the Sudoku board together just a little bit to actually have it work to solve the Sudoku. Oh yeah, I should probably add a button. This button right here, come down here and implement it like that. And now it should work. Uh, and, okay. I can fix it though, we got plenty of time. We have only an hour left? How? I could have sworn it's only been like 25 minutes. Okay, let me figure this out.
what? You have no room to judge me. Why else am I paying this $20 a month developer if not to do simple little tasks like this? Ow, dude, damn. <laughs> okay, well that was unnecessary. I'm pretty sure that uh, I just accidentally typed the wrong thing. Now let's test this out, shall we? Okay, and uh, we got a new error, so at least that's progress. Uh, did I call this somewhere else? Soft Sudoku, Soft Sudoku. Yeah, so this is just supposed to call this solve function. Now it should work. Uh, please. Okay, sick. I just realized this was cut off before. This was that second error, and this is the current error. Non-type, object is not iterable. Oh, wait, did I do the other four solution loop? That's right, I didn't. Over in Sudoku Solver, I have to iterate through. And also, I need to draw the board with the solutions. Ah, wait, so does that mean I'm done? How fast is this thing? Let me just add a little bit of timer logic and <laughs> three thousandths of a second, basically, in just under one minute left to spare. And that, my friends, is how I tricked you into learning about algorithms. Subscribe if you like this content. Uh, let me know if you do. Don't subscribe if you don't like the content. Okay, bye.